A lot of people say, well, what, what is a lumberjill? I've never heard of a lumberjill. Well, I'm a female lumberjack. A lot of people picture a big burly man with a beard, maybe a big blue ox, Paul Bunyan. What I do as a lumberjill is I take the traditional practices of forestry and turn it into competition. And I've traveled my way all around the world, competed against the best. When I picked up an ax the first time, it just felt like I'd found my home. There's so much balance and timing and technique and strength required to be successful in this sport. I think it's maybe the combination of that and just chasing that perfection, knowing that perfection is a moving target and always wanting to be better and just being driven by the desire to compete and to compete well. I started competing at Penn State. I followed in my father's footsteps. He graduated with a degree in forest science and he competed on the Penn State Woodsman's team. I always found it fascinating and I thought, oh my gosh, this is my chance to try all this cool stuff that I grew up watching slides of my dad doing. Upon graduating, I moved to Germany and worked on a pig farm, but I wanted to surround myself with familiar things, so I got back into the wood chopping when I was there, not realizing that there was this whole professional realm. And there were some women trailblazers who really set a great pace, and that was something that I really aspired to. Starting out in college, I may have cut a two and a half minute underhand. I was watching women who were cutting in a minute, and I thought, I want to be able to cut sub one minute. I'm looking at like 40 seconds, and I had people tell me, you're never going to do that. And it's maybe discouraging, but I think that we need the doubters and we need the haters because they just push you on all the more. Two of the best underhand cutters in the nation, if not the world. I just started applying to compete in Australia. I applied to compete in Canada, in Germany, in France. Gosh, it's a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of sacrifice. I was training every day after work, a couple hours, and weekends as well. Look at the speed of both of these athletes. The women compete in the underhand, the single buck, the stock saw, and the standing block. All of those are traditional forestry practices just turned sport. So if you think about the standing block, that simulates felling a tree. Uh, front face there for Martha King. Way back when, they didn't have the awesome machines that we do today, so you have to get the tree into log lengths that are manageable. You stand on the block and you chop halfway through from one side, you turn and you chop through on the other side. It's all, all part of forestry. Because this is so technical and movement specific, it's all about focusing on your approach to how you're gonna cut the block. I've gotta focus on each hit, placing it properly. In competition, it's all time and speed based. So it doesn't really matter what you look like. It's all about when you sever the block and if you severed it before everyone else. I want to be a real ax woman, not just a lumberjill, not just a chopper, but I want to know my gear inside and out, be able to stone up my axes after I've cut some hardwood. I want to be better so that I'm super well-rounded, can continue to contribute to my success, but also to the success of others because of the knowledge that I've gained. A lot of the men are very, very supportive. I have met a few who say, you know, women don't belong out here. It's been interesting to see, the better I've gotten, some of these men have come around to say, you know, I've watched you cut. Wow, that was just beautiful. That's when it feels like, oh my gosh, I have done something. Like, I'm, I'm continuing to pave the way for other people. With all this stuff on social media, you don't know what's real and what's not, but you can't fake it with the sport. I more so see this as a really great platform to tell people, look, I don't look like a lumberjack, but I'm really successful. Anything is possible if you are willing to be disciplined, if you are willing to make those sacrifices, those commitments. Don't let anybody tell you that you're not good enough or you're too small, because I hear that a lot. Well, your frame is so small, you're just so slender, like you'll blow over in the wind. And maybe some days I do, but that's okay. Use that to fuel the fire and prove people wrong.